I know you're not a U.S. Marshal. I'm a U.S. Marshal. There's only three of us in this county. You are not one of the other two. From memory, where do you live? Georgia. What's the address? You don't remember? It's not that I don't. In this day and age, scammers are all around us. Scammers have found incredibly inventive ways to steal people's money. But not all scammers are equal. And in most cases, these criminals make super dumb mistakes that get them caught. This guy was <coughs> scamming me about two weeks ago. Uh, same thing, the same exact spot. The moment when scammers realize they've been arrested is truly priceless. So let's get comfy and dive in to some of the most satisfying cases of scammers getting the jail time they deserve. Our scammer countdown starts with a group of teens who were so clueless that they didn't even realize they were being watched. This trio drove around in a stolen black BMW SUV, and as they were heading from store to store, they were being watched by the police's eye in the sky. Let's take a look at how everything unfolded. All right, we got it, signal 12, approaching uh, Golden Rod, number one lane. Switched over, number two lane, it's in between a silver truck, white SUV. Pretty signal 12, just went through the turn light, through the green light, and cut back to the number two lane, still southbound. Bear with me on the street names, I'm having to stay zoomed in on him. I don't want to lose him with how reckless he's driving. If he happens to pull over into another store and get out of the vehicle, we'll try to make contact with the occupants as they're outside of the vehicle. The more times the suspects are seen committing their scams, the more evidence the cops have against them. And at this moment, a large group of officers is closing in on the teen scammer's location. I'd be turning into Walmart. Anyone's close, let's make contact when they get out. Anyone close, let's make contact when they get out. No visual of the passenger, correct? Hey, I'd like to assume they dropped somebody off. They stopped momentarily in front of the grocery entrance. We're in position now. We'll be able to advise if the passenger approaches the car. Who else we got close to this parking lot? I'm pulling in shortly. 631 on the setup. Hey, we're going to keep eyes on it. We're going to go ahead and uh, wait till the passenger gets back. And we'll, uh, when we get to a good area where we can do an attempt to 1050 and then let air take over. 54, can you do a, a drive by? See if still occupied again? Yeah, it was uh, occupied by the driver. I just drove by it a second, I guess. As the car comes to a stop in the Walmart parking lot, the teens set what would be their last scam into action. And we can't help but get excited at the strategic plan of the police to catch the suspects red handed. We got eyes on two black males should be coming out. Lots of gift cards, just purses, black hoodies, black pants, all black. That where he's walking towards uh, Target View. Black male, uh, black hoodie, white writing, black or pants, approaching the passenger side of the vehicle now. Still stationary. Possibly waiting on the third. They're trying a bunch of different credit cards right now. Hey, if we can get takedown vehicles, let's go ahead and move on those cars now. If you're going to make contact, make good contact so you can't wiggle out of there. Just as they think they've completed yet another gift card scam, the cops finally move into place. Now the real action's about to start. What do you think? Will the suspects try to flee? As the suspects head out on foot, a dramatic chase ensues, with one of them nearly face planting right into the police truck. We got one. Where's the other one at? Yeah, I do. I do. Come on. You all right, brother? Yeah. All right, let's get one second. We're good. Hang on, buddy. Hang on, buddy. Uh, let's go. On, What'd you throw? What'd you throw? I didn't throw nothing. Stand up now. Let's go. You can grab my phone? Yeah, we got you. We got you. All right, roll to me, brother. Pull your knees up to your chest. Stand up. Yeah, we'll get you. Black nail, black hoodie, 10, 15. Yeah, hang on. We'll help you out, buddy. Don't reach for anything. Anything in your pockets? Nothing at all. 
Uh, I gotta get my truck. Yeah, get your truck, man. You're good. I got him. Thankfully, after the first two suspects were caught, they realized they had no chance and were better off not resisting. This situation escalated quickly, and what makes it all the more shocking is that the majority of this criminal group were underage teens. You guys okay? Yeah, I, I was still having my yeah, nose. I saw you guys for and then he, my, I got scary. You guys got everyone? Yeah, we got all three. Awesome. Did they try to run or no? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> they tried to wiggle out of the pinch and then... Did they? Yeah, they... You got an idea on you or no? What's your name, man? Daniel Williams. Say again? Daniel Williams. How you spell that? Why are you tensing up? Bruh, because I ain't got nothing. You steady holding me like that. Come on, bro. How do I know you, got, you don't have anything on you? Come on, man. You didn't check me for 10 minutes, you Huh? You check me for 10 minutes, you I haven't even been here for 10 minutes. So I'll see. So I'll tell you. Yeah, I'll pick up, bro. So. We're at in Broward. Hey! You're trying to. Yes, sir. Get the hell out of here. Yeah, go ahead. You need a hand with something, sir? You need a hand with something? This baby's parked out here on the sidewalk. Don't come over here to me. I'm not trying to give you a hard time, sir. I'm just letting you know we had a big felony incident right now. So that's why I'm parked here, okay? I'm moving it for you. All you got to do is ask, all right? As the cop goes around, making sure everyone's okay, an unexpected encounter takes place. Out of nowhere, an old man just starts yapping off at the cop about being in his way, being exceptionally rude. Hey, Grandpa, why don't you thank these cops for making your Walmart trip scammer-free? It truly is a thankless job. Do you have any idea on you? Do you have any idea on you? What's your first name? What's your last name? So, listen, you already have a couple charges on you, okay? Either we fingerprint you and figure out who you are, or you're not going to tell me your name and you're going to catch another charge. Okay? Jamarcus Root. What's your first name? Jamarcus. Jamarcus? You watch him? Yep. Got him. That's what, man. Just do me a favor, lean against the car. Backwards or forward? Backwards. Just trying not to scratch it too much. Jamarcus tries to hide his identity from the cops, but as soon as he realizes that this will get him another charge, he quickly changes his mind. If you ask us, being too young to understand or know these laws is a clear sign that you should not be involved in criminal activities. Alas, the cops have to deal with a ton of troubled youths like this. Look straight. Look up. How old are you? 19. Hey, look up at me. Look up. You gotta take a picture of me? Yes. Look up, guys. Look up. Thank you. It's not that hard. Who called me? The suspects clearly aren't very happy about being called, so they tried their best to give the cops a hard time. There was definitely more than meets the eye to this situation, and the full extent of their scams would soon come to light. Hey, what's in here? Anything good? I got a gift card. There's a brown wallet on the driver's seat and there's a phone back here. I mean, I don't I don't care. We don't, I mean, I feel like we don't have to. I'm not going to search one like this, so we're good. So he was in here. That's the car he was yep. using at register oh. 51. There was only one card? No, he was putting in multiple cards. They both were. I was standing at the candy. Who watching is, uh, him. So red shirt, he's your driver. He's the one we saw pulling out of the Walmart PSL. Right. This one here was at register 51. 51 was seated here. So two black using. hoodies, the ones that got out and used them. Red yes. hoodies stayed in the car. Yes, so he's the one I saw when he walked back to the car. He came here. I saw the door open, but I didn't see him get in. So I don't know if he got in. The cops learned that some of the suspects are already on probation. And when searching their car, they found a whole stash of stolen wallets, debit, and credit cards, as well as $1,900 worth of fraudulent gift cards that would confirm their scamming offenses. Hey, all three? Yeah, all three in the uh, one car. You did, or are you going to again? Yeah. Right, check them and go through. You said your phone's in the car. You got two phones? Hey, while you guys are transporting, can you just make sure that your body cam is in a position where you can pick up conversation with that seat? Okay. Turn your leg a little bit. Look at me. Turn around and look at me. Face me and look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Simple instruction. There you go. Even the fact that they have more phones than necessary is suspicious. And all this just means that they're probably going to face quite a slew of charges. Now that all three were detained, a clever cop thought of a plan to record their conversation by leaving a body cam in the car. And as soon as they're alone, the suspects openly admit to all their shenanigans. Then I heard the helicopter, the last one. That's what I thought. I'm going to hop out of the car. I bust my ass.
Cause I'm thinking he finna run me over. Y'all got the car. I bust my ass. I fell like right by his door. Get on the ground, Sheriff! Get on the ground, Sheriff! Get on the ground, Sheriff! Get on the ground! 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 Get on the this intense scammer stand down definitely kept us on the edge of our seats. But as it turns out, not all scammers are as dumb and inexperienced as these three. In the end, they all get caught though. All three receive felony charges of burglary, six charges of possession of stolen credit and debit cards, and fraudulent use of credit cards. They also received a charge of criminal use of personal information. Not many people are dumb enough to try impersonating an officer of the law. But when we run into these stupid scammers, watching them get their instant karma is totally priceless. The cops were called to the scene of a disagreement between two people in a local neighborhood, and a woman there apparently claimed to be a police officer. Little did these cops know that the investigation would turn out to be more difficult than they expected. Let's see how this goes down. What, are they, what did she do? What did she do? A cop. What did she, she say? She like pulled in front of the crosswalk where I was crossing. Okay, what did she say? Tell and me what. She tells me that she's a cop, that she's investigating me or something. All right, raise your right hand. Yeah. Do you swear in her front? Right hand. Right hand. Do you swear in her front? Okay, you just told me the whole truth. Yeah. All right. After confirming with the victim of this Karen scammer slash cop impersonator, the cop has enough evidence against her to take some serious action. This would only be the first on her long list of offenses, though. And we're definitely excited to see how all this goes down. Hi, Hi Sheriff's how Office. How are you? Good. So, I'm having somebody tell me yeah, that... Yeah, he, he was, like, harassing me, so okay. I don't know. What so, did, you, so what did you, you tell you him? Call, you can call him. I no, no, what did you tell him? I didn't say anything to him. He, he was harassing me. Well, how was he harassing you? He was like, oh, you're just doing disrespectful. Like, no. No. Okay. Well, what do you mean he was harassing you? Again, all you said is, all, all he said is, I'm doing something disrespectful. What did he say? I don't know. That's the whole thing. So how is he harassing you? I don't know. That's why I asked the bank. But hold on. Hold on. Real quick. You told me that he's harassing you. Yeah. But I then when know. I ask you how he's harassing you, you don't I don't know, know because why, why is he calling the cops? The woman in question fumbles at first, and she's not able to put a coherent sentence together to explain why she feels the witness was harassing her. To make it even worse, the cop immediately noticed that she was most likely intoxicated as well. Don't stop it. Attack. Well, if you knew, then you would have grabbed the right one. Don't try me. Can you call Martha? And you can call Billy Garlaza. That, that's fine. I'll call Billy right now. Have you had anything you to drink call, today? You can call both of them. Hey, start heading over here if possible. Let's sit one. Did you recently move? No, I have this. No, no, no. I'm asking you. No, this, the reason why I'm asking. No, well, okay. I live there. That's why I okay. own my house. Okay. Blog. So did you just pull over here because I pulled you over? Or? No, because you were sitting there around because that guy, he was there sitting here harassing me. Okay. But no, I'm just asking because you're he in the truck. He was drive. down the I got road. you. No, no. I got you. I got you. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to say him right now. He was down the road. Hey, real quick. Real quick. Hold on. Take a second. Listen, the reason why is because you're in front of somebody's house. I didn't know. When I asked you, you said you okay, lived here. This is, okay, I know who this house is. Okay. Soon enough, the holes in the woman's story became clear. And even though she thought she was untouchable because she knew one or two people in the force, she would soon experience the shock of a lifetime. All right, question for you. Do you have anything to drink today? Nope. Okay, I can smell the odor of alcohol coming from your breath. Okay, so, so I can go to his house. So he can no, be you're, right now you're detained. No, because... No, hold on. I'm telling you right now. I don't have Listen. No, I have no keys on me. Okay. You are detained. I saw you driving the vehicle. You're detained. If you try to go in the house, I'll put you under arrest. How? You are currently being detained. I'm giving you a lawful order to stay here while I have somebody do field sobriety exercises with you. Okay? okay if you want to leave and go and try to go inside the house, at that point, you'd be impeding my investigation, going against the lawful order, therefore it's resisting. You go to jail. Whatever. So are you trying to go inside? Ma'am, stay here. You're not. Ma'am, stay not, here. Can you not talk to me? No, you're staying right here. If okay, you want to try to go inside, I will put you in handcuffs right now and take you to jail. How are you going to put me in handcuffs? Because I'm giving you a lawful order to stay right here until okay. we conduct field ex right. field sobriety exercises. Okay, then that's fine. And you can call Martha 41 and Peter. Peter. And you can call. Okay, I'll call. Billy, who, I'll, I'll call Billy Galarza right now. And Newman. Okay. 
Great, you know deputies' yeah. names. Even though the cop had talked to the owner of the house and confirmed that he did in fact know the woman, this Karen clearly didn't understand the term being detained. She was trying to throw her weight around, but she'd have to be drunk to believe that she'd pass for a police officer in her state. I don't care whose house this is. If you leave our investigation, because you're being stopped right now, and I'm waiting on a second unit to I'm do field sobriety. Right now. Stopped. 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 You see the blue no. lights? You see those blue lights on my car? Because it means you're you being detained. That up on me. Yes. And I saw you driving. No, you didn't. It's on camera. Okay, show me. All right. Don't touch nope. me. Go ahead and put the phone on the car. Don't touch me. Put the me. phone on the car. I'm telling you. I will you not remove to the touch phone me. from you. You're going to be. I'm putting you in handcuffs right now. And I'm telling you not to touch me. I am telling you, put the phone okay, on the call car. Martha. Why Stop. Call Martha. Stop. Hey, Siri, call Martha. Hey, Siri, call Martha. 47 Central. Can I get another unit code 3, please? Yep, you better do it. Hey, Siri, call Martha. Stop. Hey Siri, call Martha. Hey Siri, call Martha. Stop. Hey Siri, call Martha. Oh, 47. I'm going to resist. You're not, I'm not resisting. You're literally pulling away. That's code because for resisting. you're resisting me. Stop I'm turning saying, around. You're resisting me. And Stop. I'm staying in front of this house. You know he has a camera, right? Good. I have a camera too. Yeah, I'm you're not helping sure. yourself and right now. You see that you are being resisting. The cop has clearly had enough of her back talk and rudeness, and when he decides to place her in handcuffs, she starts to freak out even more. It's pretty hilarious to see how the suspect tries to get her iPhone to call Martha, the woman she allegedly knows. It fails miserably though, and this was the perfect time for Siri to let her down. Can you touch me besides him? Let's go. Walk. Can you take him off me? My phone Keep is... Keep walking. I'm not... Come here. Shit, what? I need oh. shit, what? You have anything sharp on you that's gonna poke me, stab me, stick me? Nope, but I want shit one. Well. I want shit one right now. I want shit one right now. And I want Billy Goliza and Martha. You got I want check right now. Spread your feet. Spread your feet. And I want new mark all of them right now. Got anything in your waistband? Nope, you didn't look, because you want to touch me, right? Oh, shut up. Come on. Oh, shut up. What the f Sit down. I see your numbers. This woman is in for a hard reality check. Just because you know a few people on the police force doesn't give you immunity against committing crimes. And it certainly won't matter when you're rude and obstructing justice. How do you unlock your phone? I don't know. Okay, then we'll tell your car. It's that simple. Literally, you're trying to say you're totally towing this fence and you want to be a smart No, no, I need you to, you have his phone number memorized? Yeah. Okay. What's his phone number? That's too many numbers. It can't be 84670. It's the last four digits. 07160, that's five numbers, you need four. You're doing the same thing. There's four digits that go after that, not five. Look, 07160, that's five numbers, you need four. She's clearly used up all the patience the cops had with her. And when she wanted to act stupid and pretend not to know how to unlock her phone or know the right number, we all knew it was a cheap trick, a trick that would ensure her car was towed. Why am I being arrested? So right now you're being charged with impersonating a law enforcement officer, no, resist, re resisting an officer without violence, and then we're going no, to we're going to be conducting a DUI investigation well, later. Gave, I gave you my license. Yeah, you found the keys. Uh, I can ask her if she didn't throw them. Alright, yeah, right, you are under arrest for driving under the influence, among other things. No, I want All right. to go with you. I'm now requesting you submit to a lawful test of your breath for the purpose of determining its alcohol content. You want to provide me a breath sample? Okay, you're going to provide me a breath sample, yes or no? No, because I'm not allowed to provide okay. If you refuse to take the test I've requested of you, your yeah, driving permit will be suspended for a period of one year for a first refusal or 18 months. Do you still refuse to submit to this breath test? Everybody, and I call for Are you going to provide me a breath sample, yes or no? The woman's not even willing to give the officer a breath sample, probably because she knows she's going to test over the limit. Dealing with impossible suspects like this must be one of the hardest parts of being a cop. But unfortunately, this tantrum was only just beginning. You're kidnapping me right now. You know that, right? You're kidnapping me right now. You know that, right? You're kidnapping me right now. Because after you call the district and you have not done it, 
And you can have your phone or whatever on. That's okay. You're kidnapping me right now. <laughs> I don't want to call Martha. I want to talk to Martha or Newman right now. Hey, Siri. Hey, Siri. Hey, Siri. <laughs> We wish we could tell the woman to take it down a notch and that she's not so important that anyone would want to kidnap her. Instead, we feel sorry for the cop who's driving, who has to listen to her incessant shouting. And I want my parent or guardian. Well, let's do this one first, okay? No, because y'all trying me right now. Like, you guys took me under arrest for no reason. You need me to rip me, me, my Miranda rights. Where's my Miranda rights? I need this to be hurt. My little. Where's the, what happened to him? Rodriguez. There you go. She's on day. Where's Rodriguez? What? Don't touch me. What? She can touch me. Let's go. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Come on. Come on. Don't touch me. Walk. I got you. Don't touch me. Walk. You're touching me and you, you have it? my ID. Don't touch me. Walk. You're not getting your ID back. Asking the cops to call your parent or guardian as a grown adult is just plain embarrassing, to be honest. And this woman has made such a spectacle today that we doubt she'll be able to live this down. At long last, the suspect finally gets in touch with Martha. But as we expected, Martha did not find the woman's actions entertaining either. The stern advice from Martha should have set her straight, but it seems that there would be no end to her temper tantrum. I didn't touch them. Okay, so don't get any additional charges. But I just want to be home. I understand, so don't get any additional charges. And it'll make things faster. Because Martha, they need to be my parent. You can come get me. Yep. I need to go. Okay. All right. She's busy. She's at work. Okay. I want to go to the hospital. That sucks. Yeah, I want to go. I'll make sure the jail knows they put you in the ward with the crazy people. Watch. Okay. That's cool. Sit down. Stop being rude and disrespectful because I'm not doing anything. With Martha going off to do her actual real cop duties, the woman is left to her own devices once again. And of course, she opts for more dramatics and requests a hospital visit, which is clearly not needed. Saving my life. Saving my life. I'm gonna get you're suffocating me. You're safety. You're cuffing me. You're suffocating me. It's like I look like a kid in the car. You're suffocating me.
The hysterical behavior of this woman in the back of the cop car is so absurd it's actually laughable. Unfortunately, none of the cops dealing with her thought she was funny. Instead, they were facing an increasing struggle of keeping her calm as she slipped out of her foot restraints that should have subdued her. It's obvious that the woman is great at over-exaggerating. She literally protests just about every move the cops want to make. Playing the victim is not working in her favor, as it's not convincing anybody. All right, so this is what's going to happen. You're going to relax, and as long as you relax and you prove to us that you're not going to act like a child, we'll take it off. Okay? That's fine. We'll, we'll take care of that. Okay, slide in. Slide in. I'm going to push you in, all right? Okay. I'm gonna slide you in. No, I don't trust him. I don't trust him. I don't trust him. I don't trust him. Somebody help! Oh, okay. Yep, it's tight. No, it's not. No, she pulled it. Pulled it loose. The cops were definitely exhausted by the end of this day, and this scammer woman definitely made it onto the top list of worst suspects ever. The woman was charged with felony impersonation, resisting an officer without violence, and a DUI. She pleaded no contest and received an additional 12 months probation. Modern scammers are the reason that we sometimes feel hesitant to help out people in need. And this next seemingly rich family of scammers worsens our trust issues even more. This group was driving around in a black UMC Yukon, raising quite a few red flags as they were going about their scams. When police arrived, the first one they talked to was 39-year-old Bogdan Burchez, the driver. Okay, just turn it off. Turn it off. North roundabout, on red. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm code for. Uh, there's four other vehicles stopped on the on ramp. Yeah, uh, my So I don't know what's going on with them, but there's like a lot of debris out of the road. I don't know if there was a crash or something. All right. Do you have your license? We're getting a call now. 6617, one hit. How about the registration for the, the car? For the no, registration? No, okay. no, no. one hit. Okay, so so what happened over there? We run the car, run the car here because we've got a gas station here. So you went that way, and then turned around and yeah, came back. Yeah. Okay. What did those cars get hit? No, 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 nothing. There's quite a scene on the road, and the first mission of the cop is to get to the bottom of what's going on. There was a whole family in the car. They even had a baby in tow. It's already fishy that the family claims to live in Texas while their car is registered in New York. Well, hold on. We're not we're not done yet because you're you're driving the wrong sorry, way. You know? Sorry, sorry. We put no guys that go to here. Yeah. I'm very, very sorry. I have family. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because the next next gas station is like three miles sorry, down the road. Buddy. You're going. You know, I have a little bit guys. So, okay, so just hold on, okay? How many people are in the car? Me and my daughter. You and your daughter? And your father or family? Your, your whole family? Okay. The man initially seems apologetic and introduces the rest of the passengers as his wife and family. But this seems a tad suspicious, and it feels like the guy is putting up some kind of front. Time will tell, though. And now we see the situation from a bit of a different perspective. This is all there. That's all theirs, too? Okay. trying to check it back into the Escalade okay. and then he was calling you guys and she took those green gas cans and she was going to throw them at him and that I'm like no okay they're scamming people I'm chasing around town a little bit trying to get his license plate 
and then I seen his eyes. Bystanders help the police piece the puzzle together, and it doesn't take very long to establish that these were indeed scamming people. This wasn't their first time, though, and it seems like the scammers have been frequenting this spot, contradicting their story of only passing through and trying to head home. This guy right <coughs> was scamming me about two weeks ago, uh, the same thing, the same exact spot. Okay. He flagged me down, he was like, can you help us, can you help us? Whole help me scenario. Yeah. I've lo I lost my wallet, my credit cards, our family, we're from LA, we're just trying to get home, and my wallet, credit card, and everything. Can you help us with a couple hundred dollars? I have gold. Yeah, I know, yeah. 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 And um, I had him follow me. Uh -huh. He thought he was going to follow me to the bank. Okay. He said he followed me to the Gold Pond and Silver on 32nd Street. And okay. 8, 32nd Street and the 4th Avenue Extension. I pulled in the parking lot because I was like, I'm going to see if this ring's real. I ain't going to just give this guy money. Yeah. Like something just, I could see where maybe he was desperate, but yeah. he was just these guys, you know. So when I pulled the parking lot, I got him. He's like, hey, well, what is the problem? I'm all, nothing. I'm all, you need some cash, right? He's all, it's not bank. I'm all, no, it's bank. I bank here. It used just to be a bank. Sar <laughs> being sarcastic. Yeah. And, and I said, just hang tight. So I walked in, as soon as I started to walk in, I kept watching him, I went to close the door, and he whipped out, I ran to my truck, I really chased him around Yuma for about 20 minutes, trying to get just close enough to him to get his license plate, uh, but he's got the smoke cover on. The citizens shared his experience with these very scammers a few weeks ago, and we need to applaud his quick thinking to try and catch them right in their very own trap. The clever citizen definitely helped nail this scamming family down. He just sold this gentleman in the gold truck right here. He uh, sold him some jewelry, telling him that it's gold, I'm not sure what the story is he used, but I'll bet it's similar to the one that he told me a week ago. Yeah. Yeah, I just saw him coming off and I thought it was just a wrong way driver. I'm like, what the hell? And I saw the, the stuff in the road. I'm like, they crashed there or what? And that guy was trying trying everything he could to get away from me as soon as he could, so. I just saw him going and I'm like, is he like oh, yeah, you going the wrong timing. way? Because we get that a lot, you know, like wrong way drivers. And I'm like, yeah. what the heck's going on, you know? No, you hit it at just perfect timing. You couldn't have been here any, any better time. Yeah. Your timing right there was like perfect. That. The people around were quite on edge, and it's clear that they were incredibly thankful for the presence and help of the police. The scammers in question would soon be in even more trouble, though. He picked here. up a golf club and told me he was going to hit me with it. He literally had a golf club in his hand. He's like, oh, I'll kill you, I'll hit you, I'll kill you, whatever. He's like, I haven't recorded. Do you? Yeah, yeah I saw the golf club I've in the old man's hand. Okay, perfect. That in itself has got to be, uh, that's a felony threat, is it not? Yeah. Right, good. Yeah. yeah, and then the yeah, woman was going to yeah. throw those cans at you. Yeah, she picked up a she picked up a rock. She picked up a can, then she picked up a rock and she got about this close to me. And she's like, oh, I'm gonna hit you on the head, I'm gonna hit you, I'm gonna hit you. And she kept going like this, and I was just I was just I was ready for her to, to swing it, you know. Uh, but she had a rock in her hand, she's telling me, she, she's telling me on video, she's going to hit me with this rock. She's gonna hit me with this rock. Yeah. And she's like, Don't touch me. I'm like, I'm not touching you, man. I'm, yeah. I'm I was literally like this, like that, and they're yeah. trying to rush me. You know, they knew that the gig was up. I'm recording them and what are they gonna do? Yeah. So they're trying to be threatening. And Starting to threaten your scam victims when things don't go your way is definitely one of the worst things you can do. It's not very hard to see that this group of scammers aren't very well clued up on their laws though. And while the police may not be as great in other parts of the world, you definitely don't want to mess with these cops. What's happened? What problem? What what problem? The problem that happened over there. This guy is need to burn my car. Boom. Who, who hit your car? This guy is the guy. He boom my scratch my car. Where? I'm scared for this guy. This guy is crazy. Where, where did he scratch your car at? The boom, 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 back, the back. Boom, boom. So he scratched it in the front. Okay. The man's story seems obviously inconsistent right from the start. For starters, he can't even confirm to the cop where his car was hit, and it seems like he's trying to imply that the previously scammed witness was the one causing trouble, when we all know that the exact opposite is true. Now the only question is how the cop would handle this delicate situation going forward. Stand behind your back. Both men are placed in handcuffs, and while their main objective was to try and scam innocent people, they're being booked to jail for criminal trespasses that were much more serious than selling some fake gold. What happened? What's that? What happened? <laughs> I 
What happened? Yes, you know yes. what happened over here? What happened, sir? She scared me. What? You know what? Ha you know what happened over here? Yes. You know what happened, sir? Nothing. What happened? Tell me, please, what happened? What happened? Yes. You know what this happened? Girl, this puppy, she scared me. She scared my daughter. You know what happened? I don't know what happened. As can be expected, the woman is quite up in arms about her husband and the other man being taken away. And while she was not immediately placed in handcuffs, she'd be going down the same legal path as her companions. Do you understand what I'm saying? No? Okay. Um, because of the language barrier, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to be able to talk to you or ask you very many questions because I need to understand if you want to talk to me or not, answer any questions. Right now, you don't understand what I'm asking? No? I understand. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I don't think, because I need, to I need a, a response from you if you want to talk to me without a lawyer. Yeah, Okay. All right. Um, that's fine. We'll go back to the cell. We're almost done, okay? Uh, how much time to stay here? Um, maybe 30 minutes. Yeah. Not very long. Yeah. But you will leave, yes. Yeah, leave it. They are not going to leave. On oh, no, you? No, they're not going to leave. The cop is clearly not having any luck with the older man, and we're not sure if he's using the language barrier to his advantage. Either way, the investigation must go on, and thankfully, the main suspects were capable of basic conversation in English. Okay, so they were recording with the phone, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So when I watch the video, what is it going to show me, what do you think? Because they, they gave us the video yeah, from the she'll phone. Show you. Okay. What you, what am I gonna see though when I watch this video? I don't remember everything because I have too much stress. I got and you. My Dora. It's always hilarious when criminals get called out for their lies. And while this woman tried to feign innocence and act like she was the one who was attacked, the high quality footage the victim has proves otherwise. These people that you're you're giving rings to and for money. Um, are you telling them that it's worth a lot of money? Or are you telling them like it's 14 karat gold, it's 18 karat no, gold? No, maybe not that I mean, no. I saw it. Okay. I saw it. Uh -huh. So you're not trying to say that this is real gold that you're selling to these no, people? No, just to, to give you this piece, give me something for years. Okay. How much you want? Okay. Because right now we have a lot of people, like a lot of people are calling police saying that you're tr you and your wife, they got pictures of you guys. They're going to different gas stations and different places trying to sell this gold and you're telling them it's real and they're for hundreds of dollars. No, oh, maybe she's a lot of people in this country, a lot of people. There, there are pictures of you guys in the cars. Oh, so, really? Yes. My picture? Yeah. Neither of them are willing to admit to their wrongdoings. And even though the man seemed utterly shocked at the fact that his picture was taken, there's no denying that it's his face. It's not often that cops are able to find such solid, concrete evidence right away. But when they do, justice can be served in the most satisfying way. Okay, because what this guy's saying is he, he tried to record you because he said he sold him a fake ring before. So he has the ring that you guys tried to sell him. Remember that? No. You don't remember that? No, I remember that. Okay. So the reason he stopped today is because he recognized you on the side of the road. So he wanted to get your license plate. So he's recording. He said once he started recording, you had something in your hand and tried to hit him. What is it? He said you had some kind of like tool in your hand that you tried to hit him with. What did he hit him? Uh, like hit, like you tried to hit him. No, I'm scared because one come for me for fighting. Hey, what? Is, I know fighting, nothing. But hey, what? This is crazy. Okay. Because all the baggage inside. Let me bring this. Hey, what is, what to be is crazy? The man continues refusing to admit to anything. And when the cop was finished with these not so helpful interviews, both the man and the woman would spend the night in jail to await trial. All three of the suspects were charged with aggravated assault as well as disorderly conduct. Also included in the slew of charges were threats, criminal simulation, and fraud schemes. We've all dreamed of waking up one day having won the lottery, but in very rare cases, scammers won't leave this up to luck. A local Circle K employee thought she could outsmart the system, but she clearly wasn't as clever as she thought. And before she knew it, while trying to claim a $5,000 prize from the very store she stole from, the cops were notified of her scamming ways. Hey Sarge, I'm here at the theft. Um, manager witnessed everything. Um, says last night the employee stole $1,300, over $1,300 in lottery tickets and also pocketed the winnings. She's not sure how much the winnings are. Um, I just wanted to know if you want me to do a complaint affidavit because she's still on scene right now. So I, I could I could arrest her right now if you want me to. Do you want me to go ahead and put your handcuffs on her or? Um, what evidence do you have? She has video evidence she just gave me, but what she has advised me it shows, 
which I will, I will double check, um, is the employee uh, rips the lottery tickets off the roll, scratches them off, then goes and scans them at the machine, and when she wins something, she then um, cashes everything out. Does she confess, or what? The interviewer? I haven't talked to her yet. I haven't made any contact with her yet. Um, I just want to know what you want me to do if she... Uh, it's probably going to be a complaint affidavit, but... Okay. I need, I need to know the details of the case before I'm going to make that decision. Okay. After a brief chat with the manager of the convenience store, the officer went back to his car to check in with his sergeant. They agreed to a plan of action, and now the officer could go make contact with the suspect. Do you have a driver's license or anything? No, sir. No? Yeah, what number are you? Do you have an ID? Yes. Oh, okay. Do you have it on you? Two and four and one. What's your current address? Uh, two five way. Off Herbert. Yes. Sir. my phone number back to my regular so I'm gonna give you my current one right now. But what's when is that going? When is that changing? In seventy two hours. The woman seems a tad nervous, and it seems like she can't provide a single phone number for the cops either. At least she isn't being a Karen about the whole thing, since she had no leg to stand on anyway. Okay, so I uh, just talked to her. She confessed everything. Okay. okay. Um, I would like to take a look at the footage. Mm -hmm. I talked to my sergeant. He said that it's probably going to be what's called a complaint affidavit. So we're just going to try file charges, and the state's attorney will do uh, what they will from there. I, I told her for until then, until I confirm that, because he said he wants to get more details in the case, that she's not free to leave. So she knows that she's so she knows she's not free to leave. So if she leaves, she's she's you know that if you leave right now, okay, you're not free to leave. All right. Um, I just want to look at the video sure. myself um, and then just confirm everything with my own eyes. Okay. Before the cop goes further with the investigation, he makes sure to keep the manager and the suspect employee in the loop. After reviewing the evidence more clearly, the officer will be able to decide which course of action to take. He was still able to have a chat with the suspect's fiance, though. Hey. Hey, bud. How you doing? Okay. Hey, I just got some questions for you. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, I just, she just called me crying and, I was, and I'm trying to figure out what the f happened. Okay. What do you, you think's going on? Well, she told me that she got tips from four different people tomorrow, yesterday. It was kind of sketchy because I don't think we get tips from four different people. Tips? Yeah, like, basically they would what buy do I know lottery tickets. I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm, I'm a changed man. I haven't broken the law since I was like 13. I know you're from somewhere. Yeah, a while ago. That's my son back there. Um, but basically when people buy lottery tickets and they win money, they would share with her. They would give her half the machine so she sold it. Well, is that what she told you? She just told me just now the truth. She said that she took the money and she took money. She took, I think, like she said, like three... $30 tickets and scratch them off herself and didn't pay for them and she told me that she don't know if she's going to jail and she don't know what, what's going to happen and she shouldn't have done this. The woman apparently panicked and called her soon-to-be husband and lo and behold the cops actually recognized him from a long time ago. We feel bad for the poor guy who tried his best to turn his life around only for his fiance to conduct criminal scams right under his nose. Dustin, do you have anything to do with it? No sir. You didn't tell her to do it? No sir. Because you all need money? No sir. I'm, yes, I'm short for money, but I, I would never, I have my son to worry about. I would never do anything to jeopardize him. Uh, I'm a stay-at-home father, but if I have to get a job, I would have to get a job. I just, I, I, she's not the kind of person to do something like that, you feel me? Uh, like, she's the nicest person in the world. I'm gonna, I'm supposed to marry her in February, we're engaged. Uh, and, I don't know. It's just, it really, it really, like, makes me upset. Yeah. Understandable. Like I don't even I don't know what to do right now. Like what if she goes to jail? 
I'm not gonna have no help in the filming. Alright Dustin, I appreciate you talking to me, okay? The woman's fiance seems genuinely upset at the whole scenario, and his side of the story definitely did help to clear things up a bit. Now all that remained was to follow through on the investigation and press charges. Adrian. Hey Sarge, um, I watched the video footage. Um, she's blatantly pulling the uh, tickets off, scanning them, and then if they're losers, throwing them in the trash, and if they're winners, she holds on to the little stub she gets, and then she cashes them out. Um, we're not sure how much cash he actually took from the store, but the lottery machine is short $1,342. Uh, okay. I talked to her. She confessed everything. Um, so that's where I'm at. Okay. What did she say about the money? Where's the money? Um, that is a good question, where the money is. I... I can ask her if she wants to give it back, but we're, the store doesn't even know how much cash she actually get, has. Cause, like, well, our goal is to recover the property. Okay. So she stole money. Uh, she, she's not the rightful owner of that money. We need to recover it and log it into evidence. Okay. It's no surprise to anyone that the money was never recovered from the suspect. If she'd just been a bit smarter and at least used the winnings to pay off her lotto ticket theft, she might have gotten off a whole lot easier. The suspect was charged with grand theft and received three months probation. Here's a quick piece of information to put this next scammer's offense into perspective. What makes a U.S. Marshal different from your run-of-the-mill cop is that these officers are hired on a federal level. It's for this reason that impersonating one is just about the worst thing you can do. With that being said, let's dive in. See your other hand for me? Where are you headed to? Okay. You have your driver's license on it? Let's we'll see with the purple lights. Yeah, they're purple tonight. Where are you headed to? A shooting in Mary Hunt? Okay. 10th floor. Hey, sir. So, the vehicle is your vehicle, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because... I'm just looking, I'm looking for something to verify that you're a U.S. Marshal, all right? Upon seeing a suspicious truck fitted with police sirens and lights flying past, the officers immediately responded. When the driver was pulled over, he immediately flashes his badge. But something doesn't seem quite right about his behavior. Hey, we got somebody on the phone who wants to ask you a few questions. Okay. All right, go ahead. Sir, what is your name? Gary Lambert. Okay, what district do you work out of? I work out of Texas, but they got me down. They got me down in Florida right now, looking into uh, Marion Oaks. There's two gang member, two gangs out there that are riding on a four wheeler with a pole on it, busting into people's houses. Okay, so and they got a call, so I chase. What's that? What district in Texas do you work out of? Dallas. Okay. Yeah, exactly. I know exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Even though all the cops already know he's lying, and we can clearly see through his nonsense impersonation, it seems that he decided to see it through. We're sure you won't be able to guess just how stubborn he is about sticking to his story, and wearing a cap that blatantly says U.S. Marshals just feels a bit over the top. Fake it till you make it, right? All right, do me a favor. Just go ahead and turn around for me. Okay, put your hands behind your back. For what? I'll explain it to you. Well, all right. So you're going to be arrested for impersonating a police officer, okay? I'm going to go ahead and read this to you, okay? Right. As the man finally gets placed in handcuffs, we finally see justice unfolding. The next thing the wannabe marshal said gave him away even more. And the inconsistencies in his story can be spotted from miles away. We're honestly just amazed that the man wasn't caught red-handed any sooner. Okay. Um, he told me that you don't have your credentials with you, but they're in your 
Yeah, my charger. And your charger, a work vehicle? Right. Okay. Who's the charger registered to? It's registered to the Marshal Service. Marshal Service, okay. That's my personal vehicle. So why would the Marshals outfit your personal vehicle with lights and sirens? In, in Texas, it's not like here. Okay. You, you don't have cars like this. We you have, have a Florida tag. Here. I know. He probably didn't realize it at the time, but insisting on showing the officers his fake badge would cost him even more charges, and he would have been much better off just keeping his mouth shut. Also, no U.S. Marshal would be dumb enough to travel around on the job in a personal vehicle while leaving their certifications in some other work vehicle. Turn, turn the knob on. With a quick test in the suspect's charger, the cop is able to confirm all the legal installations the man had installed to make him resemble a U.S. Marshal, including blue and red flashing lights and sirens. Hey, how long you worked for the uh, U.S. Marshals? About three years. Three years? Okay. One on it. I'm sorry? I'm finishing up at Votech and with Coochie right now to go to work for Man County. So. To do what? To be a cop. Yeah. Coming down the road, I get a call on my cell phone. Hey, they see the foaler out there on the drone. Can you come help us? Who's that? So Who called you? My squad in Texas. If you look through my phone, you'll see the 941 area code. By squad? What do you mean by squad? They sent three or four of us down here. Who is they? The Rangers. The Rangers? Which Rangers? Like the baseball team? No. Hell no. Okay, so what Rangers? The Marshals. The Marshals? Yeah. So what, um, where do you work out of Texas? Dallas. Dallas? Yes. What's your district? District. What do you mean? Well, we just if, have you're, of the if you're a U.S. Marshal, you would know your district. At this point, we're starting to feel embarrassed for the guy. Since the more he tries to convince the police of his fake persona, the more he outs himself as an impersonating scammer, and not a very good one at that. 641? Okay. That's our squad. Okay. But there's only a few of us here. A few of you? Would I be one of those? No. I'm not a U.S. Marshal? I don't know. I see a badge. Well, here's my credentials. I am actually a special deputy U.S. Marshal. Yeah. Here are my credentials. Yeah. Mine are in my car. These, I, your credentials I, like I this have, are in there. I have one just identically to that. Okay. I, I would say probably not. Because I'm asking you very easy questions to be able to identify yourself and you're not. Who's your supervisor out of Texas? My supervisor? Yes, sir. Your direct supervisor. Uh, Jim Willis. Jim Willis? Yeah. What do you do for the United States Marshals? When the real U.S. Marshal arrived at the scene, things started to get really serious. And even though we're basically screaming at our screens with frustration, for the guy to give up on the act by now, he just doesn't know when to quit. I normally just do raids. Raids? Yeah. Okay, who do you work for? Still like okay, so where do you work for the fugitive task force? Do you work for the district marshals? No. Do you, work, who do you work for? I work for the task force. You work for the task force? Like people running, we do raids. All I do is raids. Tell okay, me. listen to me for just a second. I'm gonna give you a little bit of an out or whatever. Right. Um I know you're not a US Marshal. I'm a US Marshal. Right. I know for a fact, one hundred percent you are not with the US Marshals. Okay? okay. So I would just want to know why you would try to identify as a U.S. Marshal. Was it to like get around traffic? No. Okay, so what were you trying to do? I told you twice I was responding to a call. With the U.S. Marshals? Yes. You, okay. You don't know about the drones out there flying over? Sir, there is nothing up. like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a little tip, pro tip, okay? There's only three of us in this county. 
you are not one of the other two. That's a pro tip. The moment the real Marshall dropped that bombshell, the panic on his face is priceless. The wannabe Marshall was then transported to Marion County Jail. The man was charged with false impersonation of a law enforcement officer, unlawful use of blue lights, and unlawful use of a badge. He also received charges for the possession of a firearm during commission of a felony. Additionally, he was also found guilty of possession of diazepam and the introduction of said contraband into a detention facility. Identity theft and financial fraud is something that's taken very seriously. And if scammers want any chance of being successful, they need to have their story perfectly planned out. It was April Fool's Day 2023 when a scammer tried to push his luck a little too far. And soon, the Chambly police were called to the Delta Community Credit Union. You call? Tell me, tell me what's going on first. Corporate security sent out a uh, polo be on the lookout. Impersonating other members. Okay. He's already withdrawn thousand dollars from members from the credit union. So he's a Does he have he does a, he have cases against him? He has a fake ID. Okay. Does does he have cases for those does he have warrants? I we don't know. We just we have a email from our corporate security to call you guys, call corporate security. But at least the ID's fake. A quick chat with an employee gave the cop a brief backstory of what he's going to be dealing with. The next step was meeting the suspect. With high-level scammers like this, the cops always act with caution since these suspects can be dangerous. Hey, sir, how you doing? My name's Officer Bernard Chambly Police. How you doing? Oh, pretty good. Um, we're here concerning some uh, some information. Do you have your ID with you? How do, you say, how do you say your name? Jose. Okay. Samuel Kwame Jose. When giving his fake credentials, the man starts to look visibly nervous, which is already making alarm bells go off for the cops. Is it better to give up the act now or keep the charade going and see if you're going to get away with it? This guy was about to find out the hard way because he chose the latter. Okay. So what brings you to the bank today? Just wanted to print out for my portfolio. Are you being helped right now? She was trying to help me. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Well, I mean, we're trying to get to, to the bottom of it. Some things have been brought to our attention where it may be an issue. They, the bank has. We're just trying to confirm some basic information first. Before we get started, we just want to know who you are. And you've told us your name, we're just going to verify your ID first. And once we get that verified, we'll just go from there. All right. The employee we met at the beginning confirmed that the man had already scammed the credit union more than $150,000. So everyone is now hoping that this would finally be the day that they would pin him down. Okay. And then match him with the ID. Hmm. What's your name, sir? Samuel Ose. Hmm. Okay. What's your home address? What's your home address on your license? Don't don't pull it out. Just tell me from memory. From memory, where do you live? What's the address? So you just moved there recently? What's your date of birth? Without looking at your license, what's your date of birth, sir? You don't remember it? Take a, take a deep breath and think about it. What year were you born? If someone abruptly woke you up in the middle of the night, where you live and your date of birth should be something you can answer without a second of hesitation. It seems quite stupid to create an entire fake identity to scam people, but then fail to memorize your new birth date. But as we've learned many times before, criminals and scammers often aren't the sharpest pencils in the box. Don't make any sudden moves, turn around and put your hands like that. 
Don't make any certain moves. I got squared away. It's gonna be a forger. Ready to show one cuss it. Sir, you're being arrested. And for right now, under the suspicion of forgery and fraud, do you have any questions? I have not read you any Miranda, so I'm not asking you any questions at this time, but you are in custody. Something about you have a right to remain silent, et cetera, et cetera. The good news is that the cops have enough evidence to take him straight to jail without any further questioning. And even though he would now finally face the consequences for his scams, it's unlikely that his victims will ever get their money back. But I know the name that he gave me is not true. I'm going to Mirandize him and give him an opportunity to give me that information. See, that's what they gave me. The paperwork that I had on the... Where's that paperwork there? Oh. My bad, I'm sorry, sir. Hey, where's that paperwork y'all gave me? Okay. Do, you? do they need that? Do yeah. y'all? Could y'all make me a copy? Okay. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, <laughs> even, if, even if that's not who we say he is, that's somebody. Oh yeah, that's an African guy. You're not African, are you? Oversights like choosing to steal the identity of a person who absolutely looks nothing like you or is of a completely different ethnicity are usually what gets scammers called. And one would assume that double checking details like this would be higher on a scammer's list of priorities. Do you have a like a transaction statement, or whatever? You said something about fifteen thousand withdrawal. Is that what he's trying to do here? But not from here. What, what was he? What was he demanding? Requesting here? Just information. So I was, he was just presenting the ID, asking for information about an account. Is that an account? Yes. Has he been notified? Um, I'm sure Lafayette will be reaching out to him. Okay. Does he have a number or anything? Uh, you can get it from loss prevention. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. We have to list him as a victim as well. Instead of withdrawing money on this day, the man was caught while still trying to access the account of the person's identity he stole. He obviously did this because he didn't know how much money was actually left in the account, and his low-life scamming ways have finally caught up to him. Go ahead and step in. But step twice. I got you. Okay. What's your real name? Huh? I'm still in Miranda. Uh, he ain't gonna tell you. You gonna tell him his name now? What's your real name? So that is him. The man finally gets in the police car, and the initial investigation can wind to a close. And thank the lucky stars, the man didn't put up any fight or violently resist being arrested. He might have warrants. He already have the charge established, so yeah. know, that's not really evidence incriminating it, further incriminating evidence to the charge. Makes sense. Just getting information from him to proceed with the, with okay. the process. Hey, uh, got this guy. I'm not asking what I should do. Okay, don't cuss me out just yet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, so, got a guy, I'm charging him with forging in the first degree, presented a bad ID to an African guy, and he's Hispanic. And he also uh, gave, a, gave a wrong name in DOB, of course. But the CID, he, what, what they're saying is he might have some other cases pending with different jurisdictions. Do I need to, is that a CID thing or just charge what I got and keep it moving? The last thing to do before leaving for DeKalb County Jail is for the cop to relay what actually happened to his superior officers. After the cops found out the man's real name, they were able to see the full list of warrants and offenses he has against his name. This concludes yet another successful police arrest of a scammer who tried to play the system and get away with it. The man was charged with forgery in the first degree, identity theft using another person's identity, and forgery of a financial transaction card.
Our next scammer was caught once again by the Chambly Police Department, and it happened at the Landmark Atlanta dealership. On October 13th, the employees noticed something very suspicious about a client trying to pick up a car. The police were called, and it would turn out that their gut feeling was spot on. Hey, one, one of my detectives want to holler at you real quick. Right? Uh huh? She needs to talk to you for a second. Hold on. You close to the back, babe. Why you grabbing my heart? Go ahead and put your arms behind you. Babe, babe. Car. I mean, come to the back of the dealership. Okay, can y'all walk yeah. me to the car, please? I got you. No, I got you. I'm, not gonna take, I'm not gonna take it up. But you're not gonna bet it. Where you going, you're not gonna need wait, it. Sir, please. Don't. I, I, I said I was holding it for you. Can you come to me? They got, they they got, they got. To the back of the dealership, please. Why are y'all? The cops don't waste any time getting the suspect in handcuffs and searching him for weapons. No one knew how dangerous the situation could be, and this proactive response from the cops prevented the situation from becoming dangerous because a concealed firearm was indeed found on the suspect. Uh, yo, I'm trying to tell you. Look at my wrist. This is the way you got your arms positioned. Oh, okay, but they're still tight. I'm trying to tell you. All right, so look, this is what's going on. Yes, ma'am. Ready to park your car for me? You got it. Park it right there. You got ID right. on you. Right now, you're you being detained. Right Don't go through my bag, please. Hey, please come get my stuff. No. Like, he, she got to get your ID. Okay, I could, she could get it for her. No, she cannot. Sit right there. I'll see for me. Excuse me, miss. Why you Yo, can you get this on cam, please? You want her to have your phone? Like that. Yes, please. No, no, hold on this phone. Hold on. Ma'am, back up for me, all right? You said I could get the phone. No. Yes, she did. You just said she could get the I, phone, I, sir. That's what I said. That is exactly what you just said. So let me tell you what's going to happen. Yes, ma'am. You're saying that you're Peter Jessica Smith, right? Yes, sir. Immediately upon searching the man's bag and his wallet, the police officers discover his supposed ID with the name Peter Jethro Smith, and the cops are immediately suspicious that something might be out of place. Thankfully, this scammer was stopped right in his tracks before being able to do any real damage. Mr. Keenan Walker, because I know Peter Jethro Smith is a writer for a New York newspaper, for a Christian New York newspaper. Right. And he's a white man with blue eyes. Right. When we run this license, that's what it comes back to. So this is fraud, so that's what you're being entertained for. Splash, you have a picture with your real name on here. Yeah. And you know something else crazy, though? What? Somebody told me that, like, I was able to use my CPN. Under Peter Jester Smith? Yeah. You know, really? I swore my mom. What I'm so like, I mean, what, what y'all want me to say? Like, they told me to get a car, and that's how I would be able to do it. The cop seems quite fed up with the stupidity of the scammer, but now the suspect tries to wiggle himself out of responsibility by saying he was instructed to use the ID by someone else. Even if he was willing to snitch, we don't think it would be of any use. Can I have my phone, please, and my bag? Oh, let's gonna come with you. Come on. Oh, let's gonna come with you. So you gonna take your gun? Damn, why y'all doing this to me like this, though? Landmark called us. So what? I asked them if it was, I asked them if it was okay, they told me yes. They verified my last night. What are they talking about? That's why, I think that's why they called us, because I think you came up here last night or something like that, right? Or yesterday? Yeah, but they told me to come. I didn't, I wasn't coming here. They told me. First of all, they pre-authorized my name and they said to come here. And I told them, I was like, for what? And he was like, oh yeah, you can come tonight. You can come tonight. Last night? Yes. Uh, let me take this off for you. I wasn't even coming here, though. They set me up, bro. That's not cool. That's, That's entrapment, bro. The man even goes as far as accusing his accomplices of entrapment. But he's clearly just reaching for straws at this stage. And it's quite funny that he thinks this will help him. I'm just going to loosen just a little bit and then you're going to just twist that wrist, all right? Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yes. All right, just twist. And put the... Put that... There you go. There you go. All right, have a seat, man. She'll she be over here talking to you in one second, all right? She did her thing, so she running, all right? With the suspect safely restrained and placed in the back of the cop car, the cops can do a more thorough investigation and turn their focus towards the man's female companion, who was most likely aware or even involved in the scam he was trying to pull. It's not really a discussion at this point, 
Here you go. Can I get the phone? No. No. Can I have my phone, please? And my bag? No. Right. You're going to take everything anyway. We're taking the phone. Where are y'all taking him to? The Police Department. The female's entire demeanor is a tad annoying, and when she requests to take all the man's personal belongings, she's met with a very obvious no, since it's all being taken in for evidence. And now, she's also subject to investigation, even though she hasn't realized it yet. I'm putting in my ID for them. Because you're involved in this? I'm not. Yeah, you are. I'm not. You are. So go ahead and provide off for your ID, please. I just want to get his personal thing instead okay, of well, well, I'm not. Well, we're not going to release anything to you if you don't show us. If you, if you don't give us your ID. We don't know who we're releasing anything to. We're not releasing it. Well, it'll be. I, I can bring my ID to the station. I don't have a problem doing that. I could do that. Is there a reason why you don't want to show your ID? Um, because it's just going to elongate the process, and I can show you how to do it. No, it's, it's actually going to make the process go by quicker, because then, then we'll be able to move on to the next it's, step. It's not really a discussion at this point, ma'am. We need your ID. Or, or you can take a ride, too, for obstructing the investigation. The female isn't heavily resisting, but she isn't really being cooperative either. And this makes us all the more suspicious about her involvement. While the man is being prepared for transport, the cops deal with getting as much info from the woman as possible. And then I'll be able to get his stuff and see what's going on at the station. We need your ID. So we <clears throat> right, I don't have a problem getting my ID. Okay. Well, that, let's talk I don't have about a that problem with that. Let's handle so, one thing at a time. 336 radio, you copy? I don't work in scenarios. Okay. Serial number Alpha Delta November 292. Is it a Glock 9 caliber? Glock 19. Jam for. Yep. Oh, back before I oh, look at that. At last, she concedes and provides her ID. And luckily for her, she was cleared of involvement and allowed to leave. Unfortunately for her friend, or possibly boyfriend, he was about to be processed in jail for his failed scam. The man received a number of charges, including identity fraud, forgery in the first degree, theft by receiving stolen property, and financial transaction card theft. Scammers generally try to gain access to money and things of value, but there's nothing off limits for these criminals. Using a fake name to buy a car or open a credit card is pretty common, but we've never seen someone fake their identity for a dental appointment. This is the call the Chambly Atlanta police officers received on April 11th, 2023, and the situation gets more interesting by the minute. Hello, ma'am. How you doing today? Hey, let me see your phone real quick. What's your name? Let me see your phone real quick. What's your name? Who? Okay. What did you? What name did you come here under? Um, my name. Why? You came under here under your name. You sure about that? Mm mm. What's going on? Okay. Go ahead and stand up for me real quick. The fake confusion displayed by the woman is not counting in her favor at all. And within a few minutes of arriving, the police have enough evidence against her to put her in handcuffs. What follows is definitely one of the strangest scamming encounters we've ever seen. Mama, my Nah, that's coming with us. Come on, I don't know what's going on. Can you tell me what's going on? I explain everything to you. Let's keep on going to the car real quick. You got any weapons on you? No. You got anything sharp on you? No, I don't have anything on me. All right, face that way. Okay. I'll explain. Make, Make sure that there's no weapons on you, okay? Can you get, she got my key or something now. Can I get my stuff out there to get her? You keep the purse. Sure. Let me get, um, let her, can you tell her to come out here? Hang tight. Damn. We ain't going nowhere. Hey, no, 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 no
I just need you to stand right here. Okay. Open the door away for me. Appreciate it. Right here. The initial search goes well, and the woman isn't resisting much yet, so it's already a better start than most. The police are now hard at work trying to get to the bottom of exactly what's going on. Do you understand each of these rights as I've explained to you? Yes, ma'am. Having these rights in mind, do you, would you like to talk? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> That was a yes? Yeah. All right, I just had to get that verbal yes, okay? Yeah, yeah. All right, so we're here because they informed us that somebody supposedly was using somebody's credit card. No, I didn't use nobody's credit card. I didn't use their credit card. Let me tell you. But I, um, somebody's name. Okay. And I didn't, I paid for it myself. I haven't used a credit card. I met with the victim on Marlin Drive at that address. I bought it from a girl up here, the profile from a girl in Atlanta. So I'm and I'm that's it. Okay. I haven't used any credit. I I pay with my own money. I I went to the bank this morning and got my money out to pay them today. More and more details are coming to light, and the woman slowly starts admitting the incriminating evidence that she's been hiding from the cops. She does talk to them and doesn't ask for a lawyer, though, so she clearly doesn't think she's in that much trouble. So if you was paying cash, why you just didn't use your name? Because she used, like, a profile, like a care credit or something she did. It's, I used the girl's care credit. She gave me, she used it. I didn't. Who used it? The girl Mary. She used me, she put me as an authorized dealer on her care credit. Who's Mary? Sloan. What does she look like? I met her up here. I just bought the care credit from I don't know, ma'am. I don't know about this. I just bought it because I wanted my teeth fixed. That's you it. got her number in your phone? No. I don't have her number. No so, have how did you get in touch with her? One of my homeboys hooked me up with her. Okay. So you never actually saw this person no. or, or talked to this person? No. Do you have any of the messages between you and your homeboy to prove that he the one who gave it to you? Um, I don't, I don't know. 16. The more the woman talks, the less her story is starting to make sense. And it's becoming clearer by the second that she's not telling the officer everything. Maybe she wants to protect the people in the scamming ring. Mm. All right, so let's backtrack. Did a male or female sell your profile? Uh, um, male. Listen, keep it a buck with me. We already having this conversation. Did a male or female sell you this profile? A female. All right, a female. Whoever Do you know the female? Was, no, I don't. They got the number. No, the first number they gave me, this who gave it to me. What first number? I don't know. They caught, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I just used the profile. I just bought it from somebody. Well, I mean, I want the person who's selling the profiles. Do you got the number in your phone who sold the profile? So how did you make contact to be able to buy the profile? I came to LeBron and got it together. All right, what's the dude's name? The tidbits of information she's releasing is just enough to keep the cop interested. And while she's already admitted that her scam is part of a bigger system, she refuses to let any valuable information slip. All right, what came included in purchasing this profile? Yeah. What, no, what came included in the profile? Okay. Do you have the ID on you? Uh, Can I get it? Okay, let's start small. All right, let's take the Lord. You bought the person's profile, right? Yeah. And you used it to... What else have you used it for? Nothing else. I've never used this my first time, I promise. Okay. So why did you use it to make the, the dentist? Because I, I didn't have... Put, I wanted to get my teeth did, and they gave me a deal. I paid a um, thousand dollars for it. Okay. Paying $1,000 for a profile only to get your teeth fixed is one of the most unlikely things we've ever heard of. And even though she vehemently denies scamming other people, neither us nor the cops can believe her. Did you open any credit cards? Hey, Trey. I swear to God, I hadn't did nothing else with it. Nothing. Oh. Anything with it? I've been in Iraq. Can you check and draw 50, please? I have my own money. I have money on my own. I just called a deal. Like, okay. I do, do taxes. I, do, I have my own money. I just left the bank and got out, got the 12000 to come here. I don't, I don't, this ain't it. Okay. Did you make a, a, a driver's license in this person's name? I didn't. I didn't. I bought the whole stuff from the So people. they gave you, they get in the packet, the yes. profile. Yeah. It came with what? Um, In the profile, it comes with the ID and the care credit. They just give you the number and the ID. So they gave you the care credit? The number. Okay. If the woman was willing to pay $12,000 to get her teeth fixed, there's no real reason for her to resort to scamming. And her story is raising more and more red flags as time goes on. She admitted that she brought a profile to contain the care credit, to contain the license, right? Mm -hmm. So now you already got her for the forgery. 
Uh, you got her financial transaction card for her. What she talking about? She got $12,000 for her. That's that, whatever. Um, now y'all need to see who's about that car because I doubt that you brought a profile just for this, but you didn't buy a profile for anything else. Yeah, the car don't have no place, so they're running it out of all 50 right now. Huh? The car don't have no place, so they're running it out of all 50 right now. I didn't come back in Georgia. Yeah. With the cops conferring about how to move forward, it's clear that she's already landed herself in some deep trouble. To make matters even worse, her car was also found to be dodgy since it didn't have plates and didn't come back as being registered in the right state. Inside the woman's expensive Louis Vuitton bag, the cops discovered a stash of cash, a fraudulent credit card, and a fake ID, as well as medication that wasn't in its original container. Okay. girl for a minute. Give, a, give us one second. We're still sorting stuff out. Like I told you, we're not in no rush. We ain't smashing off right now or whatever. Just give us a little second to get it sorted to understand what's going on, okay? It's, I know what's going on. My friend, I know what's going on. It's all good, though. Um. So what, what am I being charged with? He said fraud. Right now, that's... That's what we're determining. You say you didn't use the credit card. They saying you did. So I didn't. To... I mean, can I pay them? Like, can I just pay them the money? Because I don't want these. I didn't even know all this shit go like this. I don't want this. I can just give them that money. Like, I, I mean, they can get the money. I don't want this. Hang, hang tight, okay? Hang you tight. think they're going to take it? I'm going to go to jail. I do not need to be in jail. I don't got too much to lose. Hang tight. The woman's idiotic questions about why the dentist wouldn't just take her money makes it obvious that she has no idea how serious the crime she committed actually is. That's not how crimes work. And the fact that she didn't understand that explains why she was caught so easily. All right, so what it looks like we're going to go with is the financial tra transaction fraud, um, forgery, and identity theft. There we go. Oh, and then I ain't gonna charge you for the, like, the perks, like, as like, you selling them. I'm quite sure you was getting that just for the, for the pain. pain after the teeth. My mom, I got, and they really, they my mom. I got them for my mom. Your mama ain't get that many perks, man. Why you trying to play me like I'm slow? Oh my God, my life, I don't lie. I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't lie. I'm not, I'm not gonna tell you no lie. You just spit me around the block 15 times telling me who the plug was on the profile. I ain't no snitch, I can't uh, tell you that. You know and how it's this cool. Though, but and it's you, cool. And I'm glad you That's how I know the perks. Struggling to explain the pills and all the illegal items in her bag, the woman tries to convince the cop that she wasn't a liar. We've got to give her one thing, though. At least she isn't a snitch, even though the information she's keeping a secret could possibly help her situation out a lot. You're going to lose your money, though. Yeah. I can't. This I check out money. That's all I got. They're going in. No, that's all I have. My nephew just got yeah. shot. Sis, sis, you do taxes. You gonna make that money again? Listen two days to me. Now. Listen. Why y'all taking my money? I just got it out the money. You for fraud. That's not fraudulent. That's my money. Get my phone. Let me show them my account. Okay. Well, then you gonna get an opportunity to show that. I hell yeah. That's my shit. I don't play like I, I bought somebody. Got that about a profile for a thousand dollars. I own that. Own that. Then it's this ass boy mad because he didn't go through for him. That's why he called them. He mad. He got. He bought. We both bought one. His just didn't go through. How you gonna be gay calling the man assistant? The moment the woman's told that she's gonna lose her money is when she really loses her cool, making us even more suspicious of her actions. She starts to blab about fellow scammers who also bought a profile, and she's clearly starting to panic. Why? What is the purpose of taking the money? Because of what she's getting locked up for right now, and the detective already ran you the whole story. Of what's going on? So you know nah, what time he, it is. He really didn't. So he the detective me, ain't tell you what she what she going for. He told me a little bit about it. He really just he he was talking bad. He really didn't tell me everything. Oh okay. I mean it's not your case, so really we can't disclose the details to you. I understand that not my case, but on with so it. So I can get on the road. Trying to see what going on. Good to go. All right. Um. Cause y'all just text me the amount. Well, no, I don't need that for that. I don't need that for that. Um just the, the amount of money. 
The suspect's girlfriend shows up and gives the cops a bit of a hard time as well. But the good news is that they were able to quickly wrap up this investigation and transport the woman to jail. Another day, another scammer. And this time, the cops stopped the scammer right in her tracks. She was charged with financial transaction card fraud, identity fraud using another person's information, forgery in the second degree, theft by deception, and possession of pills not in their original container. These stupid scammers definitely didn't cover their tracks well enough. And now they serve as a warning for any other prospective criminal that the cops will catch you just about every time. Stay tuned for more exciting cop countdowns on The Hidden Files.